I remember when you announced the Celtics coach and you're coming down the corridor and you, you said to me, what do we need? And I said, we gotta get tougher. Um, and you came out in the press conference, about halfway through the press conference, you went, and I think we gotta get tougher too. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get along fine, yes. me and that guy. Yeah, and, and you know what's funny, Red Hallbach always, you remember you used to say instigators. Yes, yeah. You used to say, doctor, you have no instigators on your team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for him, that. that was toughness, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you a story that uh, you may or may not remember. That first, second year with Boston, uh, we were doing pretty poorly, mm -hmm. and there was a fan behind the bench uh, and just kept yelling at the players. You know, you guys suck, you guys are bad. Yeah, yeah. And I turned around and was about to stop. And that was when you and Tommy yeah. were sitting right there and both of you took your head from and did like this to me. Yeah. Like, yeah, don't just, do yeah. it. Yeah. I'll never forget that, don't do it. It's not worth it. Yeah. Uh, you guys must have sensed and I was about to go off on a fan, which yeah. thank God I didn't, yeah. you know. But without you and Tommy, I probably would have. Yeah. That was a big moment for me because I realized, all right, uh, the city wants to win too, yeah. and they don't care who's on the floor. That's they right. still want to win, and you just got to yeah. take it. And yeah. that taught I'm me a lot. I'm glad I was there with Tommy. Yeah, this. Tommy for me uh, was really, really important, and I didn't know he would be. I would always take Tommy to his car from the airplane. And, uh, you know, we'd get off the plane, he'd jump in my car, I'd drive him to his car. And those little five minute talks were, for me, immeasurable. Like, I really believe I won't, don't have the success that I've had without having a Tommy in my life. Uh, because he really taught me a lot about team building mm -hmm. uh, and, and things like that. He loved so, to talk about the intangibles. And just watching how he talked about his teammates. Yeah. That, that yeah. was real. Yeah, the so love. Very real, yeah. And so, yeah, Tommy was very important for me. Yeah, he, well, I mean, for me, he was my mentor, he was my friend, he was my big brother, he was, he was all those rolled into one. Um, and um, I don't know, this, I think it was Paul Lucy, our producer, who once said that, that we don't have basketball anymore, we have the Mike and Tommy show that used to be on the air. And, and, and to be the Mike, was, that's the best I've ever had. Well, I'll yeah. tell you this, I was glad I joined that team. Yeah. Because <laughs> before I used to watch the guys, you and Tommy, I was like, Oh, they, they're homers. They just <laughs> cheer for them. Then when you get to them, you're like, oh, I love these guys. They're the best. I was not going to coach again unless a job presented itself where I thought uh, it, it, the criteria were all met. Like yeah. um, good team, good organization, and high character guys. Yeah. Uh, I just and, wasn't gonna, it wasn't worth it for me. And uh, are they turning out to be the guys you want them to be? Yeah, better guys. You had a group like that obviously in 2008. Oh, yeah. Um, I still, that doesn't seem like it was that long ago. No, uh, it doesn't. <laughs> and it, it was. Doesn't. That's the greatest group uh, collection of guys, Mike, um, when you go deep into mm -hmm. how many different guys, yeah. from Posey to PJ Brown yeah. to Brando yeah. to Perk. Uh, to Eddie House, to Tony Allen, mm -hmm. to Baby, uh, to Leon Pope. Think mm -hmm. about all those guys I named that have not named the big three. Mm -hmm. just, you know, exactly right. yep. it just tells you how deep and close that team yeah. was. You're connected with them for the rest of your life. Right. You do, uh, right? You feel and it's it's like the friendship you have with guys who you don't speak with for six months, but when you, as soon as you talk to him on the phone and see him, it's like it was last week. KG calls me more now than. He did when he was a player, yeah. you know. Yeah. He's always got something to say. I bet he does. You know, uh, Paul, all of them, Tony yeah. Allen. I mean, it's just so many guys that uh, you'll never let go of, and it's yeah. pretty cool. I've been around a lot of coaches, and, and there are not many who have done what you have done. And what I'm about to say is you're not afraid to have relationships with the guys in the media. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be a reason that you can, you, you always come to the surface when people are talking about good, he's a good guy, who's yeah. a good guy, a good person. And um, why is that? Well, why do coaches and some people feel they have to have that difference? That, you know, that it's funny, though. Mike, I was warned when I first started coaching, yeah. uh, don't get close to two groups. Your players, yeah. which I think is the craziest yeah. thing I've ever heard in the media. And what I have found is there's good people Sure. On both, yeah, exactly. you know, and, right. yeah. um, they become your friends. They do. You see your mic goes out on top of the ring, though? Well, I gotta hope not. <laughs> um, yeah, if I win a ring, Mike's gonna get a ring either way. <laughs> yeah, let's put it that way. That's great. That's, the, that's, that's, that's as political since we're in the election year <laughs> as you can have. Mike's getting a ring regardless, and it's gonna be green. Yeah. Um. <laughs>